Chapter One I've never had so much homework in my life, Jessica Wakefield declared. I'll never be able to finish it all and learn the new cheer in time for tomorrow's game. Well, Jess, her sister Elizabeth told her, if you have to make a choice, my guess is you'll know that cheer inside out before bedtime. The two girls were identical twins with long blonde hair and blue-green eyes. But Elizabeth knew that when it came to schoolwork, they might as well have been from different planets. Elizabeth loved to read and write and almost never put off homework. Jessica, on the other hand, welcomed any excuse to get out of an assignment. Now, as they walked home together from Sweet Valley Middle School, Elizabeth was not surprised when her sister made an urgent request. Liz... Jessica turned toward her twin with a solemn expression on her pretty face. There's only one person in the whole world who can help me out. You're the smartest person in sixth grade English. I'll bet it would take you no time at all to whip up a tiny little paragraph or two on the book I had to read. Jessica, do you mean you want me to do a book report for you? Jessica tossed her blonde ponytail and shook her head vigorously. Of course not, silly. I only meant you could sort of get it started while I practice. After all, you wouldn't want your little sister to be the worst cheerleader in the whole booster club, would you? Elizabeth had been born four minutes before Jessica, and the two girls always joked about her being the older one. Sometimes, though, she really did feel more mature and responsible than her headstrong twin. Elizabeth was so patient and far-sighted, while fun-loving Jessica seldom saw past the next good time. So Jessica always ran to Elizabeth when her talent for trouble landed her in hot water. Still, Elizabeth thought fondly, it was impossible to imagine life without her twin. Tell you what, Jess, Elizabeth knew now was the time to enlist her twin's cooperation on the next issue of their class newspaper. I'll start on an outline for your report if you'll get me the interview I need for the Sweet Valley Sixers. Jessica, who loved to read the latest gossip in the Sixers, had no interest at all in anything so time-consuming as working for the paper. Who are you interviewing? she asked cautiously. It'll be easy, Elizabeth assured her. Mr. Bowman wants a special article to introduce the new sixth grade student. I told him you met her in the neighborhood. You know, the girl who moved into the Loganson's old house? You mean disgusting Dennis? Jessica stopped in the middle of the street and turned to face her sister. You want me to talk to that obnoxious snob? She hugged her books to her chest and looked solemnly into the face that was the mirror image of her own. Liz, I will never speak to that girl again except to tell her exactly what I think of her. I know you and Brooke Dennis didn't exactly hit it off, Jess, but I just thought, you must be crazy if you think I'm going to have anything do to do with someone the whole school is going to be sorry they met. Jessica frowned, then announced firmly, I'd rather do my own book report. Brooke Dennis had gotten off on the worst foot with Jessica. Usually, Jessica was willing to go to any lengths to avoid doing her own homework, but not this time. Elizabeth still remembered the way Jessica described Brooke after accidentally meeting her on her walk throughout the neighborhood. That girl, Jessica had announced, is the nastiest person I've ever met. Obviously, she hadn't changed her mind. I went out of my way to introduce myself and be friendly, Jessica declared, and she made it very clear she didn't want any friends. Why, she even insulted poor Sally in front of me. Sally was the dog Jessica had babysat for. 
Caroline Pierce says Brooke's father is a famous screenwriter and he's spending a ton of money to redecorate their new house. She even heard that Jessica went to finishing school before her family moved to Sweet Valley. Jessica's eyes flashed. Disgusting Dennis is finished all right. I'm going to make sure that none of my friends have anything to do with her. And once that happens, she might as well march right back to finishing school because she'll be all washed up here. Elizabeth knew that her sister tended to form quick opinions of people, and sometimes they were unfair. Elizabeth, on the other hand, liked to give everyone a chance. Maybe she's not really so bad, Jess. Caroline says, How is Caroline Pierce such an expert on someone she's never even met? Jessica interrupted. Big Mouth Pierce is nothing but a full-time gossip. I know Caroline sometimes talks before she thinks, Jess, Elizabeth began, but I'd sure rather listen to someone who has nice things to say than waste my energy hating someone I don't really know. As the twins headed up their driveway, Jessica decided the last thing she wanted was a fight with her sister. Lizzie, she said in her best making up voice, let's not spoil a nice afternoon by talking about you know who. She broke into a sunny smile and trotted ahead of her sister as they neared the kitchen door. Race you to the refrigerator. They piled into the bright Spanish tiled kitchen of the Wakefield split level ranch house. Elizabeth reached the refrigerator just as Jessica was diving into a box of assorted donuts and pastries. Where on earth did these come from? She asked, choosing a shiny donut from the carton. I thought we ate everything in the house during math homework last night. The day before the twins had spent several hours working their way through two bags of potato chips, six cans of root beer, and three chapters of their math books. Just then, their older brother Stephen burst through the door behind them. Hold it right there, he warned, pointing his fingers like guns. One more bite and you'll both be eating dust. This is a stick-up and I'm the fastest shot in the West. And the fastest chewer, Elizabeth added, stuffing a donut into her brother's mouth. Tall and dark, Stephen looked a lot like Mr. Wakefield. And even though Stephen was usually a giant pain, sometimes Elizabeth thought he could be funny. Jessica seemed to be enjoying her brother's cowboy imitation, too. Just because you're a big deal high school freshman, she teased, doesn't mean you can tell us what to do. She poked a gun finger of her own into Stephen's ribs and started to tickle him. I'm keeping this loot, and I'd like to see the cowpoke who can stop me. Hey, you two, I'm serious. Mom told me she bought some desserts for a very important client, and I have a feeling that if these goodies are gone when she gets home from work, this is our last roundup. Jessica and Elizabeth stared first at each other, and then at the half-empty box. Quickly, Jessica retied the string around the white bakery carton and jammed it back into the refrigerator shelf. Maybe Mom's client is on a diet, she said hopefully. I don't think so, announced an amused voice from the doorway. In fact, he looks like a pretty hefty eater to me. They all turned to see their slim, blonde mother slipping her briefcase onto a kitchen chair. Don't worry, though, said Mrs. Wakefield. I've learned from experience that it pays to keep a spare on hand. Joining the three at the refrigerator, she opened the door and removed another big bakery carton from the very back. Carefully, she placed the box on the counter and revealed the biggest lemon meringue pie any of them had ever seen. Wow! Stephen's gaze lingered on the huge dessert. Her new client must be some big shot to rate, rate such special treatment. Well, Mr. Dennis is an important screenwriter. He's asked my firm to decorate his home in his office. But he's also new in town, so I wanted to let him know how happy we are he's moved to Sweet Valley. Once again, the twins exchanged glances, but this time they weren't worrying about food. Do you mean the same Dennis's that are moving in down the street? Elizabeth knew that her mother's work as an interior designer often meant interesting visitors, but this time she was sure it meant nothing but trouble. You mean they're coming here? Tonight? Jessica's aqua eyes were flashing angrily. In answer to both your questions, yes. Mrs. Wakefield carefully lifted the pie from its box and lowered it onto a glass serving plate. 
And I'm willing to bet, she added, smiling at Stephen, that once you find out which movie script Mr. Dennis wrote, you'll be running for your autograph book. It couldn't be too great, Stephen said casually. Nobody important ever comes to live in Sweet Valley. I'm not so sure. I'd be willing to drive a little bit to make sure I always came home to Sweet Valley's blue sky and white beach. Anyway, that's how the writer of Car Capers feels. Car Capers? Stephen looked as though he'd just won a million dollars. You mean the creator of the greatest movie of all time is going to be our neighbor? And he's actually going to come over here tonight? Jessica was not as impressed. She'd seen Car Capers too, but she'd also seen their new neighbor's daughter. And nothing and nobody was going to make her like Brooke Dennis. Well, it just goes to show that money and fame aren't everything, Jessica said flatly. They couldn't even buy Mr. Important a human being for a daughter. Jessica, I have a feeling you might change your mind about Brooke Dennis over a piece of this pie tonight. I have a feeling I'd rather die. Jessica saw the shocked expressions around her and hurried to ex explain. Brooke Dennis actually tried to kick Mrs. Bramble's dog when I was walking her one day. She grimaced, recalling the tall, well-dressed girl she tried to say hello to as she and Sally, Mrs. Bramble's aging cocker spaniel, strolled down the street. Jessica hadn't been prepared for the rude reception she got from Brooke Dennis. Why would anyone want to kick a harmless old dog like Sally? Stephen asked. He still had a soft spot in his heart for the old dog. The whole Wakefield family had adopted her for a weekend while her elderly owner visited her family. Sally is half blind and she wouldn't hurt a flea. Apparently Sally wasn't enough of a thoroughbred to satisfy Brooke Dennis. The minute Sally started trying to lick her, Brooke went nuts. Jessica winced, remembering the way the girl had shoved the old dog away with her, from her with the toe of her designer shoe. Miss Snob said she was an expert on dogs and that Sally was a pretty poor specimen. Stephen scooped up his basketball jersey and headed toward the door. Well, even if she's twice as gross as you say, I can't wait to meet her dad. Besides, Jess, she might not be so bad once you get to know her. See you guys after breakfast. As the screen door slammed behind her brother, Jessica couldn't help wondering why everyone was defending Brooke, even before meeting her. Just you wait, she told her mother and Elizabeth. And that was exactly what Elizabeth decided to do. Even though Elizabeth had met Brooke Dennis briefly and agreed that the girl was unpleasant, Elizabeth intended to give her a chance. Later that afternoon, Elizabeth sat at her desk writing an English paper while Jessica practiced cheering in front of the full-length mirror in her room. Ignoring her twin's concentration, Jessica stood behind the open door, barking out the booster's latest cheer. Give me a C! Elizabeth covered her ears and tried to think about Black Beauty. Give me a tea. She was sure Anna Sewell didn't have half the trouble writing her book that Elizabeth was having writing about it. She got up and walked to the bathroom that separated her room from Jessica's, slamming the door with as much emphasis as she could. Give me an O-R-Y. What have you got? I've got one paragraph, Elizabeth thought, and that's all I'm going to get as long as this cheer lasts. Sweet. Victory! Jessica roared from her room, cartwheeling suddenly through the door to her sister's room and finishing with a flying leap that landed her squarely in the middle of Elizabeth's bed. It's just no good, she announced angrily, turning over on her stomach and dangling her long, sun-tanned legs over the side. I can't think of anything but how revolting tonight's going to be. I can't think of anything, period. Jess, will you please shut your door and try to keep it down? If I don't get this paper done, I won't even get the chance to make up my mind about this new girl. I'll have to stay in my room all night and forget about dessert. That's it, Liz. You just gave me the best excuse in the world for not seeing Brooke. I'll just say I have too much homework. Elizabeth got up from her desk and sat on the bed beside her twin. There's only one problem with that, little sister, she said with a laugh. How do you expect anyone to believe that Jessica Wakefield lets homework stand in the way of lemon meringue pie? Jessica pouted. I guess you're right. I'll just have to get sick then. Which shouldn't be too hard, she added, winking at Elizabeth. I'm already feeling pretty rotten just thinking about Brooke Dennis. Do you know, Liz, she was actually wearing a skirt and stockings on a weekend? She looked like the cover of Seventeen. 
Well, that just makes her someone a lot of your friends should really like, doesn't it? Elizabeth teased. Laugh all you want, Liz, Jessica warned her twin, but you'll be sorry you didn't listen to me. Mr. Wakefield poked his head through the doorway and smiled at the twins. You'll both be sorry if you miss the great dinner your mothers get, got ready. By the time the three got downstairs, Stephen and Mrs. Wakefield had set the table. The smell of roast beef filled the kitchen. Mmm, Elizabeth said appreciatively. We got here just in time. Yeah, Stephen said sarcastically. Just in time to get out of helping. The meal was delicious, and Jessica was so intent on eating that she had forgotten all about their after-dinner guests until the doorbell rang out. Elizabeth looked at her twin. Jessica's face registered surprise, then suddenly she doubled over in her seat. Oh, she wailed, looking miserable. I think I ate too much. Her mother was already walking toward the door when Jessica brushed past her in a mad dash for the stairs. Save a piece of pie for me, she yelled down from the top step. Maybe I'll feel better later. She raced into her room and shut the door tight just as Henry Dimmis and his daughter walked into the front hall. Chapter 2 Welcome, Mrs. Wakefield smiled at the stout man and his tall, slender daughter. We've been so looking forward to meeting Brooke. The girl who followed Mrs. Wakefield and Mr. Dimmis into the living room was very pretty. Brooke walked stiffly and with her nose in the air, but she still seemed very delicate, with huge brown eyes and soft brown curls. When everyone had been introduced and was seated comfortably, Mr. Wakefield apologized. I'm afraid you won't be meeting the whole family tonight. It seems dinner was too much for some of us. Well, I can understand that, Mr. Dennis told him. Brooke and I just finished one of the biggest lobsters I've ever seen, and quite frankly, I didn't have much help at all. Brooke's pretty face fell and her big eyes narrowed. I just didn't like it, that's all. That's all right, Mrs. Wakefield smiled. It just means you'll have more room for this. She reached forward to cut the lemon meringue pie that was sitting on the coffee table. Wow, I've been thinking about this all night. Stephen waited impatiently while his mother served the guests first. No, thank you. Brooke shook her head when Mrs. Wakefield offered her some pie. But it looks delicious, honey, Mr. Dennis said. You hardly ate any dinner. Why don't you try some? I like the food back home, she replied, still frowning. Brooke wasn't trying to win any popularity contests, Elizabeth thought. Still, she was probably just lonely and missed her old school friends. Elizabeth smiled at her. Maybe you'd rather come upstairs to my room and listen to some records, Brooke. We've got the latest Johnny Buck album. But Brooke folded her hands over her pleated paisley skirt. I don't like Johnny Buck at all, she told Elizabeth coldly. I only listen to classical music. I'm afraid I'm responsible for that, Henry Dimmis explained. You see, the only records we have at home are mine, and Brooke spends most of her time listening to them. I've tried to tell her she should get out more, spend time with people her own age. If I spent time with people my own age, I'd be bored to tears. Brooke looked pointedly at Elizabeth and then glared at Stephen when she heard him chuckling. As the evening wore on, Elizabeth lost all sympathy for their snobbish visitor. The Wakefields tried again and again to make Brooke feel at home, but nothing worked. When Mrs. Wakefield asked Brooke what color she wanted in her new bedroom, she turned positively nasty. I don't need anyone's help to decorate my room, she snapped angrily. Besides, it will never be as nice as my old one. It's always hard to move, Mr. Wakefield smiled with understanding at Mr. Dennis, but I'll bet making a few new friends will change all that. I don't need a new room, she declared, and I don't need new friends either. Jessica was nearly crazy with curiosity by the time the Dennis's had left. As soon as she heard Elizabeth come up the stairs, she darted through their bathroom and banged on her door. Tell me everything, she begged, dropping onto the bed and perking up her ears. I can tell you one thing, Jess, Elizabeth faced her sister. If I don't get some work done on my English paper, you're going to be in worse trouble with me than you already are with mom. Why, Liz, Jessica was all wide-eyed innocence. What on earth do you mean? I mean, Mom knows very well that that stomachache of yours was the worst act to hit town since Brooke Dennis. Cheska beamed. I knew it. Wasn't she hideous? Wasn't she the absolute worst? I have to admit you were right, Elizabeth confessed. 
Brooke Dennis is the rudest person I've ever met. She shook her head, recalling the way Brooke had treated the whole family. She didn't try to kick any dogs tonight, but she sure did her best to hurt everyone's feelings. Jessica rolled her eyes dramatically and looked at the ceiling. And just think, we're going to have to put up with her at school. Worse than that, we're going to have to walk to school with her. What? Jessica was horrified. Suddenly gossiping about Brooke wasn't fun anymore. It's true. Brooke's starting school tomorrow. Her father asked Mom if we could show her the way, and of course Mom said we'd be glad to. That's easy for Mom to say, moaned Jessica, her head buried now in Elizabeth's bedspread. She doesn't have to be seen in the company of the biggest creep in the world. How am I ever going to explain this to the unicorns? The unicorns were an exclusive club to which Jessica belonged. Elizabeth knew how important the club was to her sister. Still, a group of girls who called themselves the unicorns because they thought they were beautiful and special seemed pretty silly. I guess the snob squad will really be disappointed in you, in you huh, Jess? Come on, Lizzie. Just because my friends happen to be popular and are always in on the latest fashions doesn't mean they're snobs. Maybe not, said Elizabeth, but it sure does mean they spend too much time on gossip and boys and too little time being friendly. She turned to the work at her desk. Besides, I'm much more interested in horses than unicorns right now. Once again, she began to write as she leaped through the pages of the story about the beautiful black stallion. After Brooke, even homework seems like fun. Well, Jessica suggested breezily, as long as you're having such a ball, maybe you could write two papers and have twice as much fun. Nice try, little sister, but no chance. I need to go to bed early, or else I'll never be patient enough to walk Brooke to school without blowing up at her on the way. Jessica got off the bed and headed reluctantly toward her own room. Okay, she sighed. If Mr. Bowman knew what I've been through, I'll bet he wouldn't even expect me to turn in a report. She sighed again, reminding Elizabeth of a soap opera heroine. I've already worked all week drawing a Nancy Drew poster for that silly old book there. And to top it off, I have to walk to school with the biggest creep in the world. Tomorrow, I'll be a social outcast. Unless... She stopped suddenly, her face brightening. Unless I still have my stomachache tomorrow and can't go to school. Jessica began playing her scene in earnest. It really would be for the best, Liz. I mean, everyone's used to you being friendly with social rejects, but I can't afford to be seen with the wrong people. She paused dramatically at the door to her room. Think what it would do to my reputation. Jessica cared a lot more than her sister did about being popular. Although the girls looked alike, they couldn't have been more different in their choice of friends. Jessica wanted to know only the prettiest, most popular girls, while Elizabeth chose friends who were interesting and independent. In the case of Brooke Dennis, though, the twins were in complete agreement. I know it won't be easy. Elizabeth was genuinely sympathetic. Disgusting Dennis may not be good for your image, Jess, and she may not be good for my temper, but I'm afraid we can't get out of tomorrow. We'll just have to try and make the best of things but the best of things seemed remote when the twins woke up the next morning. Elizabeth turned over in bed and immediately remembered whom she was walking to school with. Determined to be patient, she got up and headed for the bathroom. She poked her head into Jessica's room and noticed that, as usual, her twin had turned off her clock radio and had snuggled back under her sheets. Rise and shine, she called cheerily as she brushed her teeth in front of the mirror. I can't, Jessica groaned from deeper under her covers. I didn't sleep well at all. I had brook mares all night. Elizabeth laughed. Well, if it will make you feel any better, you can wear my new hair ribbon. You mean the white one? Yes, I thought it might boost your spirits on the long walk with the brook. Thanks, Liz. It'll go really well with my new purple sweater vest. But don't count on me walking with that monster. I've got a plan. She raced into Elizabeth's room and took the white ribbon out of the top dresser drawer. Then, still in her nightgown, she posed in front of the bathroom mirror with her hair pulled up. Jess, Mom already promised Brooke's father we'd walk with her today. She watched her sister whirling and smiling into the glass. You wouldn't want to ruin Mom's chances with a big client, would you? Jessica continued to look into the mirror. Suddenly, she frowned at her blonde reflection. Just look at those giant circles under my eyes. I look awful, and it's all from worrying about Brooke Dennis. 
I'll be the laughing stock of the school, and I won't be able to face anybody ever again, especially the unicorns. Elizabeth joined her sister at the mirror. May I remind you, Jessica Wakefield, she scolded, that we are identical twins? If you look hideous, then so do I. Jessica hugged her sister. If I look as good as you, Lizzie, then there's nothing to worry about. She took off the ribbon and put it on Elizabeth's head. Hey, why don't you go to school with me today? We can tell Mom that you're sick. She knows you would never lie about something like that. Elizabeth burst into giggles. So that's your scheme? I thought we agreed to stop switching places. Besides, she reminded Jessica, you know very well that Mom can tell us apart. So hurry up and get dressed. We're both going to school today. But Jessica was not someone who gave up easily. At breakfast, Elizabeth realized her twin had already hatched another plan to avoid walking to school with Brooke. As soon as she devoured two poached eggs and polished off one of her special bacon sandwiches, Jessica leaped from the table and hurried upstairs to her room. A minute later, she was back in the kitchen with a huge oak tag board. How do you like my poster for the book fair? She asked, holding the big sheet in front of her face. Everyone agreed that the poster was coming along beautifully. Using magic markers and glitter glue, Jessica had traced the covers of her favorite books in the Nancy Drew mystery series. You've had a lot of practice with this display, honey. Uh, you've had a lot of patience with this display, honey. Mrs. Wakefield looked at the careful work with approval. Even if it doesn't win a prize, you should be very proud. Oh, it will win all right, Jessica answered cheerily. If, she added less confidently, I can get it to school without totally destroying it. It's really too big to carry so far. Is that a hint that you want a ride today? Mr. Wakefield stood up, folded his newspaper, and put it into his briefcase. If it is, the train leaves right now. Jessica scampered to get her books and coat. Gee, Liz, she said in a voice that sounded genuinely sorry. I was counting on walking with you and Brooke, but I guess my schoolwork has to come first. Before Elizabeth could say a word, Jessica had kissed her mother and was out the door, following her father to the car. In dismay, Elizabeth tagged behind and watched her twin wave gaily. See you in school, big sister. Behind her, Elizabeth heard loud applause. She turned to find Stephen clapping his hands above his empty plate. Oh, what a performance, he cheered. Jessica's going to win an Academy Award one of these days. Elizabeth smiled in spite of herself. Well, she told him, she didn't have me fooled for one minute. Now it was time for Mrs. Wakefield to leave. Scooping up her coat and briefcase, she walked over to Elizabeth and tilted her chin up for a kiss. I know Brooke Dennis didn't seem like the most charming girl in the world, dear, but my bet is you're just the person who can help get that chip off her shoulder. Elizabeth might be able to knock the chip off Brooke's shoulder, mused Stephen, but I just wonder how she's going to get Brooke's swelled head down to size. If anyone can do it, Elizabeth can. Her mother tousled Stephen's wavy brown hair affectionately and then hurried out the door. Don't forget to lock up, you two, she called over her shoulder. Elizabeth was glad her mother had so much confidence in her. But as she said goodbye to Stephen and headed for Brooke's house, she didn't feel too confident herself. She felt even more doubtful when she spotted Brooke waiting impatiently by the front door. What took you so long, she asked as soon as Elizabeth reached her, walking that dilapidated dog. And no, you've got me confused with Jessica. She got a ride to school with my dad. We'll see her later. I can hardly wait. Brooke turned on her heel, her long brown hair fluttering behind her. She was dressed very properly again, Elizabeth noticed. Her green blouse and skirt were perfectly matched with a necklace of emerald beads and small lime-colored earrings. Elizabeth started to walk beside Brooke. Have you gotten your class schedule yet? Elizabeth asked, trying to be friendly. No. Do you know who your homeroom teacher is? No, and I don't care either. Elizabeth had known that the walk to school would be unpleasant, but this was even worse than she'd feared. Still, she was determined not to get upset with Brooke. I just thought we might have some classes together, Elizabeth pressed on. And if you're interested in working on the sixth grade newspaper, we can always use writers. Well, don't worry. I have better things to do with my time than write for some dumb kids' paper. At this point, the only thing keeping Elizabeth from snapping was that she didn't want to disappoint her mother. Besides, Mr. Bowman had wanted a story about Brooke for the Sixers. Maybe if I change the subject, thought Elizabeth. Brooke, I know you must have led a pretty exciting life with such an important father, she said. What was it like in Hollywood? Brooke stopped her brisk walk and faced Elizabeth. 
Look, she said, with the same scowl on her face Elizabeth remembered from the night before. I don't want to walk to school with you any more than you want to walk with me. So let's make this as painless as possible and cut out the 20 questions routine, okay? Brooke didn't need to ask twi twice. Elizabeth was only too glad to walk the rest of the way in silence. In fact, she would have given anything to be walking beside anyone but disgusting Dennis. Chapter 3 By the time the two girls arrived at the front steps of Sweet Valley Middle School, Elizabeth was tired and angry. Usually she began the school day feeling full of energy and eager to talk to her friends. Today, she wished she could hide in a hole rather than introduce Brooke Dennis to her friends. Unfortunately, two of her best friends met them at the door. Amy Sutton and Julie Porter worked on the paper with Elizabeth. Amy tall and tomboyish, was Elizabeth's favorite friend at school. Though Jessica sometimes made fun of Amy for being shy and awkward, Elizabeth loved her friend's quiet sense of humor. Julie was a lot like Elizabeth, a pretty, friendly girl who went her own way. Hi, Elizabeth. Julie's eyes were blazing with excitement. Guess which three super reporters have a special meeting with Mr. Bowman after school today. You mean he likes our idea to do record reviews? Elizabeth was so glad their plans for a new music column had been approved that she almost forgot about Brooke. Then the first bell rang and students began filing past them. Suddenly, she remembered she hadn't introduced her neighbor to the two girls. Amy and Julie, we've got someone new in our class. This is Brooke Dennis. She just moved into our neighborhood with her father. Elizabeth held her breath as she turned toward the quiet girl beside her. Brooke, these are two of my friends, Amy Sutton and Julie Porter. Listen, Brooke told Elizabeth and her two friends. I think it's just great that the three of you are such terrific friends. She looked briefly at Amy and Julie, then turned back to Elizabeth. But if you're asking me to join your happy little family, you can forget it right now. Amy's pale blue eyes shut and then opened again. She stared at the pretty new girl as if she couldn't believe what she'd heard. Julie, however, reacted quickly. Actually, she told Brooke, nobody asked you. Elizabeth was just trying to be polite something you wouldn't know much about. I know one thing, Elizabeth Brooke responded coldly as the last bell rang. I don't intend to be around here long enough to get to know any of you, and that's a loss I can live with, she added sourly. Elizabeth pa Elizabeth's patience had just about run out, but she decided to see her new neighbor to her homeroom. As she raced to her first class, Elizabeth hoped like mad that the two of them would not end up in many of the same classes. She wanted to enjoy the rest of the day. It was with real relief that she learned Brooke had been assigned to another sixth grade homeroom. At least that meant that she and Jessica wouldn't have to deal with her neighbor first thing in the morning. Unfortunately, Brooke was scheduled for social studies with Jessica. Elizabeth knew that Mrs. Arnett's class was already her twin's least favorite time of the day. She hated to think what would happen when Jessica found out. Elizabeth had every reason to worry. The minute Jessica took her seat in Mrs. Arnett's class and found Brooke beside her, the trouble started. So which Bobsy twin are you? asked Brooke. As if I cared, she added snidely. I'm Jessica. Oh, yes, the one with the tummy ache. Did Mommy make it all better? Jessica was not nearly as good as her twin at controlling her temper. Yes, she snapped back. My stomach ache's gone, but with you around, now I have a pain in the neck. Fortunately, Brooke didn't have time to answer. Mrs. Arnett rose from her desk to call roll. One by one, the students answered to their names. Just as she reached the P's, Caroline Pierce, whose desk was at the front of the room, let out an ear-splitting shriek and clapped a hand over her cheek. For heaven's sake, Caroline dear, what is the matter? Mrs. Arnett rushed to the embarrassed girl's side and began examining her face. Jessica and most of the other students had seen Charlie Cashman aim the rubber band toward the first row. Always ready to play a trick, Charlie had pulled back the elastic as if he were drawing a bow. Then he let fly and pounded his chest with a fist. Many members of the class started to laugh. Charlie, who loved to get a reaction, was bowing from the waist at his desk. I'll tell you what's the matter, Brooke announced from her seat beside Jessica. That boy there shot a rubber band. She pointed a finger at Charlie, who turned in surprise to face his strange accuser. And, she added, glaring at Jessica, a lot of people in this class think it was pretty funny. The whole room was suddenly dead silent. Even Mrs. Arnett seemed shocked. Caroline Pierce, who should have been angriest of all at Charlie, 
broke the silence by whispering loudly to the girl beside her, just what we need in this class, an FBI informer. Everyone had heard Caroline's loud complaint, and now the entire class burst out laughing. And the entire class, with one exception, thought tattletales were the lowest form of humanity. The one exception, of course, was Brooke Dennis. She sat stiffly in her seat and nodded with approval when Mrs. Arnett told Charlie he'd have to stay after school and warn the rest of the class they had better settle down until they, unless they wanted to join him. Brooke's popularity with her new classmates didn't improve as the day wore on. By the time English began, word about the rubber band incident had gotten around to most of the students in Mr. Bowman's room. Jessica, minus her book report, was in no mood for another class with Brooke. Strolling into class just as the final bell sounded, she was relieved to find she was seated far away from her neighbor. Thank goodness, she confided to her best friend, Leela Fowler. We've got four rows between us and Miss Pris. Leela was a unicorn and a member of the Boosters. She, too, had had more than enough of Brooks Rubis. Do you know that just now in the hall she suggested that I was slowing her down because I wasn't walking fast enough? She tossed her shoulder-length hair and fingered the strand of pearls that leaped across her pink sweater. As if I twisted my ankle on purpose. As if I wanted to miss cheering at the game tonight. Jessica saw the scorn in her friend's angry eyes. If looks could kill, she thought, Brooke Dennis would have crumpled over at her desk. Don't worry about disgusting Dennis, she whispered as Mr. Bowman took roll. I have a feeling we can make her sorry she ever came to the school. Leela, who liked a good scheme as much as Jessica, smiled with anticipation. I love the way your mind works, Jessica. I'm willing to do my part as long as it's nasty. Both girls were so busy giggling that they almost missed the best news of the day. Instead of asking students to read their book reports, Mr. Bowman told his class they could spend the period finishing their posters for the book fair. Jessica was delighted. Not only could she put off her report another day, but she would do something she enjoyed. Her work on the poster had been fun, and she looked forward to all the compliments she'd get as soon as the class saw it. Sure enough, everyone began to crowd around the big sheet. That's about the most professional job I've ever seen, Charlie Cashman said admiringly, even if mine is more colorful. He unrolled his poster and placed it on the table beside Jessica. The students around them shook with laughter as they saw the bright green baggy pants and the polka dot hat he painted on the boy in his picture. Tom Sawyer isn't about a clown, joked Jerry McAllister. I know, Charlie admitted, but I figured Mark Twain wouldn't mind me dressing up as hero a little bit. After all, how can an ordinary guy compete against that cute Nancy Drew? It doesn't seem like there's much competition anyway, Jerry said, glancing at Jessica's poster. It doesn't seem like there's much work being done either. Mr. Bowman was smiling, but he clearly meant business. Quickly, the group around Jerry and Jessica broke up. Everyone concentrated on finishing the work for Friday's book fair. Since you're new in class, the English teacher told Brooke, I don't think there will be time for you to do a poster of your own. He put an arm on Brooke's shoulder and steered her toward Jessica and Leela, who were working side by side. Why don't you help Leela with her project on Charlotte's Web? Jessica looked at her friend. Leela was as stiff as a board, and her mouth was frozen into a straight line. Brooke waited until Mr. Bowman had walked to the other side of the room before glancing at Leela's poster. That looks more like a traffic jam than a spider's web, she said coolly, studying the tangled lines Leela had painted in blue underneath the book's title. Well, I'm not surprised that you're an expert on bugs, Leela snapped. She dipped her brush into the blue paint and handed it to Brooke. Since you could do so much better, why don't you just take over? Sure, why not? Brooke grabbed the brush and pushed Leela aside. She guided the brush over the poster in a series of sharp, jagged lines. She was dipping her brush into the jar for the second time when she accidentally knocked over the jar with the brush. Before anyone realized it, the blue paint had poured in a shiny stream over the desk and across Jessica's poster. In seconds, all the carefully traced adventures of Nancy Drew were covered with a blue streak. Jessica was so stunned that she didn't make a sound. She stood over her ruined project with a look of horror on her face. Huge tears began to form the corners of her blue-green eyes. How could you? Leela shouted at Brooke. Do you know how much work went into that poster? She stood opposite Brooke, her hands on her hips. What's the matter with you anyway? 
You've done nothing but make everyone miserable since you got here. Mr. Bowman joined the girls as soon as he heard Layla yelling. What's the trouble over here, he asked. Jessica shook her head and stared at her ruined poster. Brooke knocked the paint over, she told him. My Nancy Drew project is, is... She felt tears coming and couldn't finish her sentence. Instead of apologizing, Brooke stunned Jessica by insisting angrily, I did not. Leela and Jessica stared at each other in disbelief. It was bad enough that Brooke had destroyed the poster, but for her to deny it was just too much. Then how do you explain the paint all over Jessica's work? Leela demanded. You know very well how it got there. Brooke turned calmly to face the teacher. Mr. Bowman, Leela knocked my elbow just as I was helping her finish the web. She was standing behind me, and I guess she didn't like the way I was painting. What? Leela's face was dark with rage. I never even touched you. She glared at the tall girl with more hatred than Jessica had ever seen. I'd be afraid of catching something. Now, girls, cautioned Mr. Bowman, I wouldn't want to keep you both after school. The important thing is not who's to blame, but how we can help Jessica. He waved his hand toward the paint, which by now had run across the desk and onto the floor. But Mr. Bowman, Leela stammered, trying to explain, I didn't have anything to do with it. I... Everybody makes mistakes, Brooke told her. Too bad some of us can't admit it. Never mind, Mr. Bowman handed a damp rag to Leela and a mop to Brooke. You're both on cleanup duty until this mess is mopped up. Chapter 4 even though Leela usually insisted on eating lunch at the unicorn table, Jessica waved as soon as she saw her sister and Amy at the back of the cafeteria. Come on, she urged her friend. Let's sit with Elizabeth so I can fill her in. Balancing a mini pizza on her tray, she raced across the room to share her disappointment with the one person who always understood how she felt. Elizabeth knew right away that something was bothering her twin. You look terrible, Jess. What's the matter? Only everything, Liz. Only my whole life is ruined, and it's all because of that new girl. I wish she and her father would pack their bags and move to Alaska. Yeah, added Leela, joining them, or maybe to the North Pole. When Elizabeth heard about the accident, she felt awful. She knew how much Jessica had wanted to win the poster contest. Mr. Bowman and the book fair committee had decided to award a Kindle's gift certificate as well as a book club membership this year. Jessica had already picked out a jumpsuit at her favorite department store. Gosh, Jess, I just know you would have won, said Elizabeth. Are you sure you can't fix your project? If Jessica can fix that mess, commented Leela, she could turn Brooke Dennis into Snow White. I'm afraid it's true, Liz. Jessica sighed and used her napkin to wipe a tear from her eye. My poster looks like it's advertising a brand new Nancy Drew mystery, The Case of the Blue Smear. At least it was an accident, said Amy. I mean, it's not as if she did it on purpose. Like Elizabeth, Amy didn't hurry to judge others harshly. Maybe she was really trying to help. With that kind of help, Leela told the girls, Brooke is just about the last person in the world anybody would want for a friend. Besides, she added, lowering her voice to a whisper, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if she knew exactly what she was doing. What? Even Jessica couldn't believe what Leela was suggesting. You should have seen Brooke's face when Mr. Bowman told you what a great job you'd done. She looked incredibly jealous. Leela, do you think Brooke ruined my sister's poster on purpose? But Leela had no time to answer Elizabeth's question. A hush fell over the table as Jessica pointed to the front of the room. Brooke Dennis was storming away from the cafeteria line, and her face was bright red. Guess what just happened? Caroline Pierce raced to the table and barely waited for an answer to her question. Brooke just told off Bruce, Bruce Patman. You've got to be kidding. Jessica knew that hardly anyone ever argued with Bruce. His father was one of the wealthiest men in Sweet Valley. Spoiled, handsome Bruce could always get his way, and he had plenty of friends to stick up for him. You should have heard her. Caroline's face was flushed with excitement. There was nothing she liked better than a good story. This was the best she'd had to tell in a long, long time. She asked him who he thought he was for getting into line ahead of her, and then she called him a jerk. Caroline paused while everyone turned back to watch the tall, good-looking boy amble over to a seat at a nearby table. 
And she mentioned you too, Jessica. Caroline smiled at both twins, relishing their surprise. She said that between Bruce and crybaby Wakefield, she'd had enough of the school. How could she talk that way about Jessica? Elizabeth fumed. If that girl knew what was good for her, she'd... Elizabeth stopped suddenly, staring in disbelief as Brooke left the lunch line and walked toward their table. As naturally as if she had been invited, Brooke put her tray in front of the empty seat by Leela. Wait a minute. You can't sit here, said Amy. And why, may I ask, can't I sit here? This is a public school, isn't it? Or did you guys pay for this table? Look, there are plenty of other tables, suggested Leela. Go ruin someone else's day. This seat's taken. That's funny, Brooke glared at the fake chair. It looks pretty empty to me. Well, it's not, said Elizabeth, trying to hold her temper. We're saving it. That's right, Leela agreed suddenly. It's reserved. Yes. Suddenly, Jessica came alive. She had come up with the perfect scheme. That seat saved for my sister. Your what? For the first time, Brooke looked confused. What do you mean? Your sister's right here. My other sister. Didn't you know? We're triplets. That seat saved for Jennifer. Elizabeth didn't like to lie, but for once, she felt that someone actually deserved to be on the wrong end of one of Jessica's crazy schemes. Trying to keep from laughing, she nodded vigorously. That's right, she told Brooke. Jennifer will be here any minute. Isn't that so, Amy? Sure, Amy told Brooke. She'll be here. It's just that Jennifer's always late. I don't know about you all, but I'm going for more pizza. Jessica slipped out of her place and ran toward the food line. Brooke didn't even watch her go. She was too interested in getting to the bottom of things. And just where was Jennifer last night? She asked Elizabeth. She and Jessica both had the same stomach ache, Elizabeth assured Brooke. Besides, she added smiling, she hates lemon meringue pie. That's right, I do. Hi, everybody. Thanks for saving my place. Everyone looked up in amazement. There was Jessica. Or was it? Elizabeth noticed that her sister had put on the blue cardigan she kept in her locker. She'd also changed her hair by pinning a blue bow behind one ear. Jessica's voice had changed, too. It was small and whispery, not at all like her usual confident tone. Hi, Jennifer, said Leela, catching on right away. Wait till you hear what happened in English class. She glared pointedly at Brooke. The others joined in and soon were chatting with Jennifer as if she had always been a member of their group. By the way, Jen, Elizabeth announced, this is Brooke Dennis. You know, the guest you missed last night? Jessica turned to Brooke. Oh, yes, she whispered in her soft voice. I'm so glad to meet you, Brooke. I just know we're going to be great friends. Not as long as you hang around with this crowd, Brooke told her. Jennifer turned to Brooke with a knowing smile. Brooke picked up her tray and stalked off to another table. Behind her, the four girls collapsed into giggles. Boy, Leela told the twins when she finally stopped laughing. You two, or should I say three, have really started something. You bet we have, promised Jessica, grinning triumphantly at her sister. And we're just the ones who can finish it, too. Wait till you see how nice Jennifer is going to be to Brooke, even if it kills her. Pretty soon she's going to have disgusting Dennis eating right out of her hand. What a great idea, Leela grinned. Once Brooke trusts Jennifer, we can really have some fun. She stood up, her uneaten pizza still on her tray. But we have to move fast, she reminded them. We've got to spread the word before Brooke finds out Jennifer doesn't really exist. That's right, Amy agreed. I'll tell everyone in my math class all about the Wakefield triplets. The rest of you spread the word next period. The girls decided to make sure that all the kids in the sixth grade would keep this prank a secret. They were sure everyone would cooperate since Brooke had snubbed every single person who tried to be nice to her. Getting back at disgusting Dennis was going to be a class project. Just remember, Jessica cautioned them, Jennifer always wears a bow and talks in a whisper. Make sure everyone is in on it. And everyone was. For the rest of the day, no matter what classroom she entered, as long as she was wearing the tiny bow, Jessica was greeted as Jennifer. Leela had passed the word to the rest of the unicorns, so that even 7th graders like Kimberly Haver and 8th graders like Janet Howe, the unicorn's president, went along. Hi, Jennifer, Janet sang out as Brooke and Jessica passed her in the hall. Tell Jessica there's a club meeting after school today. 
Thank goodness for confided to Jennifer. I'm glad it's going to be just you on the walk home today. No offense, Jennifer, but I don't like Jessica one bit. In fact, you're about the only person in this whole school I consider talking to. It was true. Jessica had been so busy trying to fool Brooke that she'd ignored all the nasty things her neighbor said and did. Instead, she'd stuck to the new girl's side all afternoon, pretending to enjoy being with her. Now Brooke thought she'd found someone to listen to her selfish complaints. I don't understand the way everybody fusses over Jessica, Brooke was telling her now. It was enough to make me sick. What's she got anyway? I don't know, Jessica answered quickly, trying to stifle a laugh. I've never understood all that sports and cheerleading stuff Jessica likes. Me neither. Hey, do you want to go see a movie tonight? I, I can't, Jessica stammered. I'm supposed to go to the basketball game. I thought you said you hate sports, Brooke challenged her new friend. No, it's not that, Jessica covered her mistake quickly. It's just that I always watch Jessica cheer. She needs me there. She can't do a thing without me. Well, if you like her better than me. It's not that. Jessica felt desperate. She didn't want to lose Brooke's trust. Hey, why don't you come to the game with me? She suggested. We'll sit through the whole boring thing together. Okay, I guess. See you after school. Jessica watched Brooke wave and head for her last class. What on earth was she going to do now? Jessica wondered. She had a unicorn meeting after school when she was supposed to be walking home with Brooke. And on top of that, she promised to take Brooke to watch herself cheer. Hi, Jennifer. What's up? Elizabeth teased as she walked up to her twin. But Jessica didn't need teasing. She needed help. She tore the blue bow from her hair. It's me, Liz. Remember your one and only sister? Oh, yes, Elizabeth grinned. The budding actress. The one with the great big stomach aches and the heavy, heavy posters. Listen, big sister, this is no time for kidding around. We're in serious trouble. I've got a unicorn meeting, so Jennifer can't walk Brooke home. I mean, this Jennifer can't. Jessica Wakeville, don't you dare even suggest it for one minute, Elizabeth protested, knowing what her twin was about to ask. I'm already into this mess as deep as I want to go. Oh, Liz, come on. You dislike Brooke as much as I do. Besides, if you do me this one special favor, I'll never ever ask you to do anything else for me as long as I live. Or until you need an understudy again. Elizabeth couldn't contain her smile. I have to admit, Jess, the scheme of yours is absolutely brilliant. Then you'll walk Brooke home? Sure, agreed Elizabeth. But you better fill me in on what Jennifer and Brooke talked about today. It sounds as if you two got pretty chummy. As they walked to their last class, Jessica brought her twin up to date. Elizabeth took the blue bow and hid it in her notebook. Jessica gave her the cardigan and then hurried down the hall. Watching her sister race off, Elizabeth wondered what Jessica had gotten them both into. It was one thing to be triplets for an afternoon, but how long could they keep it up? Wouldn't Brooke begin to wonder why she never saw Elizabeth, Jessica, and Jennifer all together? And what would happen when Brooke discovered what a fool they had made of her? Aside from these questions, something else kept bothering her all through history class. Elizabeth couldn't help wondering, was anybody really nasty enough to deserve such a dirty trick? Chapter 5 After class, Elizabeth and Brooke started home. They were down the steps and passing the teacher's parking lot when Amy caught up with them. Panting and out of breath, she signaled for them to stop. Jennifer, have you seen Elizabeth? Amy wore a strange, frantic expression. Mr. Bowman is looking for her everywhere. We've got a meeting for the newspaper. Do you think she forgot? Uh, yes. Elizabeth looked at Brooke and added quickly, I hope so anyway. I'm tired of hearing about that dumb paper. Tom is right, Brooke told her. She talks about that paper as if it were the New York Times instead of a silly little typed up rag. Amy looked at Elizabeth meaningfully. Mr. Bowman told me he'd look for Elizabeth outside while I scoured, scouted out the gym. He thought maybe she was trying to get a story on the game tonight. Brooks seemed confused. Well, if Mr. Bowman sent you to look for Elizabeth in the gym, what are you doing out here? There aren't any basketball fans here, right, Jennifer? Now Elizabeth understood why Amy had rushed after them. It would ruin all their plans if Mr. Bowman cornered Jennifer now. But it was too late. Just behind them, running at a leisurely athletic clip, was the English teacher. 
as he waved enjoyment Elizabeth's heart sank. I'm glad Amy got up with you, Elizabeth. Mr. Bowman was carrying back issues of the Sweet Valley Sixers under his arm. We've got a lot of ground to cover if you want to start a music column. Before Brooke or Elizabeth could say a word, Amy took control. Sorry, Mr. Bowman, but I got the wrong way, Phil. These lookalikes always fool me. You mean we still have to nail down Elizabeth? I thought I finally had you girls sorted out. Mr. Bowman laughed and turned back toward the gym with Amy. See you tomorrow, Brooke. You too, Jessica. It's amazing. Brooke was shaking her head beside Elizabeth as the two continued home. He still hasn't got you right. I guess it happens all the time, huh? It sure does. Elizabeth breathed a sigh of relief and felt grateful Amy had gotten to them in time. Being a triplet means you never know who someone thinks you are. Sometimes, she thought, you're not even sure yourself. It wasn't until after dinner that Jessica broke the bad news. That afternoon's close calls were just the beginning. Since Jennifer had already agreed to go with Brooke to the game, someone had to play Jennifer while Jessica cheered. The someone who was selected was not happy about it. What do you mean I have to help you out? cried Elizabeth. What happened to your never asking me for another favor for as long as you live? Jessica put both hands on her twin shoulders and gazed soulfully into Elizabeth's eyes. Oh, Liz, you know I'd never ask you to do anything so risky unless my life depended on it. Brooke hates me so much. If she find out, found out now how we've been fooling her, I just don't know what she'd do. It would probably be the best thing for all of us if Brooke found out what we were up to. I had to phone Mr. Bowman after school and make up some ridiculous reason for not going to the newspaper meeting. All I could think of was that I felt sick. And, little sister, that wasn't exactly a lie. Jessica knew that Elizabeth hated to deceive people. While she herself didn't see anything wrong with an occasional fib, her twin liked to be honest all the time. Don't worry, Liz. I promise I won't be for much longer. Leela and I are going to come up with a terrific plan to put Brooke in her place once and for all. Her blue-green eyes narrowed as she thought about how sorry Brooke Dennis was going to be that she had ever moved to Sweet Valley. If it weren't for the way she's treated you, Jess, I wouldn't have anything to do with your schemes. But every time I remember how she's picked on you and the way she acted with Mom and Dad, I get angry all over again. Jessica gave Elizabeth a big hug. I knew you'd help. You're the best triplet I ever had, Liz. Suddenly, she was sorting through the clothes in her sister's closet. Now, let's see if we can find the perfect outfit for Jennifer tonight. Elizabeth, who was used to her sister's borrowing every piece of clothing she owned, laughed. And why can't Jennifer wear something of yours to the game? Oh, Elizabeth. Jessica continued sorting through the dresses and skirts hanging in the closet. We don't want Jennifer to wear anything too smart. She should be more like you. You know, not really caring how she looks. Thanks a lot. Jessica put Elizabeth's gray jumper back on the rack with the other outfits and turned to her sister. You know what I mean, she said in a serious tone. You're good at so many things, Liz. You're a terrific writer, a great dancer, and you're just about the smartest girl in our class. She looked at Elizabeth with open admiration. I'm different. Everyone knows it. Her long lashes lowered, and she smiled almost shyly at her twin. I could never be as bright, talented, or sweet as you, Liz. What else have I got to care about but being popular and looking good? Elizabeth stared at her sister. You're every bit as smart and talented as I am, Jessica Wakefield, she exclaimed. If you didn't spend so much time on cheerleading, you'd be the best student in Madame Andre's ballet class. And if you weren't so busy with unicorn meetings, you could do just as well as I do in school. Maybe better, Jessica laughed and hugged Elizabeth again. Thanks for not letting me feel sorry for myself, Lizzie. I guess I'm more the goof-off type than the homework type. Speaking of types, Elizabeth added thoughtfully, just exactly what type is Jennifer? You know, I invented Jennifer so fast, I didn't have time to figure out what she's like. Neither did I. As far as I can see, though, she's a big hit with Brooke. She sure is, agreed Jessica. Disgusting Dennis is crazy about her. I wonder why. Well, she's got everything going for her, as far as Brooke's concerned. Why? Jessica looked confused. What do you mean? Simple, announced Elizabeth, grinning. She's not like either of us. Right. She's not much fun at all, so she's a perfect match for disgusting Dennis. And, Jessica announced, if Jennifer's not like either of us, she shouldn't dress like either of us. Maybe we should use some of Stephen's clothes for Jennifer. What do you say? 
Well, it will be different, Elizabeth said, picturing herself strolling beside Brooke in one of Stephen's huge rugby jerseys. Let's do it. And they did. Stephen disliked Brooke as much as the twins and agreed readily. In fact, he loved being part of their plan. But remember, he warned the twins, if mom finds out any of this, I never heard about it. He piled three sweaters and several rugby shirts into Jessica's arms. After all, this is her big client's daughter you're tricking. I don't mind your pulling the wool over Brooke's eyes, but I just don't want mom to find out I said it was okay to use my sweaters. The gymnasium was packed with fans when Brooke and Jennifer arrived for the basketball game. The girls scrambled up the bleachers, tripping over legs and coats. They reached what seemed like the last two seats in the gym. Boy, Brooke told her new friend, I can't believe so many kids like this stupid game. Elizabeth, who really loved to watch Jessica cheer, tried to pretend she felt the same way Brooke did. I know, she observed, scanning the rows ahead of them. These kids could be doing a lot better things with their time than watching ten guys fight over a ball. Wow, Brooke sounded amused. You know pretty much about basketball, don't you? I don't even know how many players make up a team. As the referee blew his whistle for the opening jump, she looked at Jennifer, then turned her attention to the gym floor. Elizabeth and Jessica keep pounding it into my head. They really like this stupid game. Elizabeth felt warm in the crowded room and began wriggling out of her jacket. Besides, our dad takes us to ball games all the time. Brooke watched the play for a minute more before answering her friend. In a way, Jennifer, she told Elizabeth, you're pretty lucky. My dad doesn't take me anywhere much. I mean, all he cares about are movies. Elizabeth suddenly heard the tiny, nagging voice of her conscience again. Maybe Brooke wasn't as tough as she wanted everyone to think she was. Maybe this whole scheme wasn't such a great idea after all. The voice got even louder when Brooke looked at the outfit Elizabeth was wearing. Hey, you look cute, Jen. Elizabeth could hardly believe the kind, friendly expression on her neighbor's face. Thanks, Brooke, she said, amazed at the compliment. I sure didn't expect you of all people to like the way I dress. Oh, you mean because of my clothes? I didn't even get to pick them out. Dad hired some woman to select a whole school wardrobe for me. Everything she chose is either too tight or too hot. I've tried to tell Dad, but he's always got his nose buried in some script. She looked longingly at Elizabeth's loose, flowing shirt. I'd give anything to have an outfit like yours. Elizabeth was feeling worse and worse. She began to hope they wouldn't have to talk with anyone from school. Perhaps they could just watch the game and hurry home. She didn't find fooling Brooke as much fun as she and Jessica had planned. Unfortunately, everyone else still thought tricking Brooke was a ter ter terrific idea, especially Leela Fowler. The girls had only been seated a few minutes when Leela worked her way toward the top row to join them. Hi, Jennifer, she said loudly, squeezing in beside Elizabeth. I hope you and your sisters haven't forgotten about my slumber party this weekend. Everybody's coming. I mean, everybody who matters. She glanced briefly at Brooke, who was dressed in a tangerine dress with a broad yellow and orange print belt. Oh, Brooke, I'm sorry nobody told you about our quaint local customs. We don't usually require formal dress at sporting events. Look, Leela, this wasn't exactly my idea of a fun place to spend the evening. Brooke folded her arms, and the old, familiar scowl reappeared on her face. I only came to keep Jennifer company. And I just came to watch Jessica cheer. Elizabeth was relieved to see the booster squad run out into the floor. So if you two could postpone your argument till later, I'd appreciate it. Give me an S. Jessica was standing in front of the squad with her hands on her hips. Give me an aspirin, Brooke said sarcastically. I'm going to be sick. Give me a W. Now all the boosters had joined Jessica in a circle, kicking high with each letter they named. Give me an E E T. Gosh, said Leela. Gazing intently at each formation the girls performed, I sure wish I hadn't twisted my ankle or I'd be out there with them. What's stopping you, asked Brooke. They all cheer like they've got broken ankles. Elizabeth didn't like what she was hearing. Now wait a minute, Brooke. Jessica and the others put a lot of time and work into these routines. Look, Jennifer, Brooke turned suddenly to Elizabeth. I know Jessica is your sister and everyone loves her to death, but frankly, I couldn't care less. The expression in her brown eyes was halfway between tears and anger. I thought you and I were friends, but if you're always going to take sides with that shallow, spoiled little... They scored! 
Leela was on her feet and yelling with everyone else in the gym. Elizabeth, standing now with the crowd, felt the anger rush to her cheeks. How could anyone talk about Jessica that way? As the crowd seated itself, the cheerleaders counted off the points of the first score. One, they all yelled as Jessica executed a perfect cartwheel. Two, everyone cheered, and Jessica once more began a cartwheel. But this time something went wrong. Instead of landing upright, Jessica kept turning and landed in an awkward heap on the floor. Jess! Elizabeth was on her feet, trying to make her way down to the bottom of the stands. She could see Jessica was already picking herself up and getting in line for the next cheer, but she also knew how embarrassed and hurt her twin must feel. She wanted to watch the rest of the game from right up front, where Jessica would know she was there for her. But Brooke had other ideas. She's all right. Don't worry about her, she urged. Elizabeth stopped and stared up at Brooke. She was smiling, a big, broad smile that made it clear she had actually enjoyed watching Jessica fall. Now there was no more small voice telling Elizabeth it was wrong to trick Brooke Dennis. For one second, Elizabeth wanted to race back up the bleachers and show Brooke just how it felt to fall flat on your face in front of hundreds of people. But she stopped herself. Or rather, Leela stopped her. Jessica's friend had followed Elizabeth to help, but now she grabbed Elizabeth's elbow and pulled her down on the seat beside her. Don't let her spoil our plan, Elizabeth, she whispered. That would be letting her off too easy. Elizabeth took a deep breath and counted to ten. Leela, of course, was right. For Jessica's sake, Jennifer would have to go on liking Brooke, even though everyone else hated her. She might not know it yet, Elizabeth promised herself as she returned to her old seat. But Brooke was sure going to find out that no one could ever come between the Wakefield twins.